This is Herman Brooks. Herman is just like the rest of us. Every day, he has to make all kinds of decisions. Like what to wear, whom to date, and when to panic. Now, these decisions should be easy. But if you take a look inside Herman's head, you'll see why he sometimes has trouble making up his mind. I'm Herman's intellect. Without me, he couldn't hold his job, pay his rent, or tie his shoes. I'm Herman's sensitivity. Without me, he wouldn't feel tenderness, honesty, or love. The good things in life. I'm Herman's anxiety, and I keep him out of trouble. And believe me, there's trouble everywhere. I'm Herman's lust. Without me, he'd miss out on all the good stuff. You know, fun, food, babes. Sometimes they agree. Usually they don't. But this struggle is going on inside all of us. And it's all going on inside Herman's head. I'll get you those facts right away. We have the most technologically advanced database system in the industry. Mr. Bracken, how hot is the sunspot? Roughly 7,263 degrees. Who is Sir Galahad's father? Sir Lancelot. What are the first three lines of the fourth song the Beatles released in the United States? She loves you, yeah, yeah, yeah. She loves you, yeah, yeah, yeah. She loves you, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Morning, Herman. Morning, Louise. Did Mr. Bracken say anything about me being late? No, I don't think he noticed it. This is a man who knows the rectal temperature of a three-toed sloth. <laughs> he knows that. He knows I'm late. Well, he's been in a really good mood lately. Maybe he won't say anything. You're late, Herman. <laughs> What's the rectal temperature of a three-toed sloth? 91.5 degrees. <laughs> Pretty frightening, huh? You're in a good mood today. I am? Why, are you singing to yourself? I do that sometimes. Me too. My therapist says that music is the essence of the human soul given voice. What are you humming, Herman? Oh, nothing special. This is the tale of our castaways. They're here for a long, long time. Enough! I can't take it anymore. Wait, I'm getting to the good part. There's Gilligan. The skipper too. Where in the depths of your ignorance did you come up with this song? Somewhere around here. Herman, have you noticed Mr. Bracken's breath lately? Yeah, it's pretty lethal. Somebody's gonna have to tell him. It's a tough one, Louise. Who would be that insensitive? Go out with you? If I had no face, I could do better. May I have your attention? Being as I'm in a rare good mood and feeling warmth and compassion for my fellow man. Excuse me, I'm the new mail clerk. Get the hell out of here. Can't you see I'm talking to my people? <laughs> now, where was I? Warmth and compassion. Oh, yes. Tomorrow is my 20th anniversary with Waterton Publishing. There's going to be a company party here in the research room, and I will be receiving a service award. Oh, uh, <laughs> Mr. Crawford thought it would be a nice touch if someone said a few words about me. So, Herman, I'd like you to prepare a five, ten-minute speech. Me, sir? What an opportunity. At last, we get to impress the executives, perhaps even get a promotion. I hate speaking in public. Are you still worried about that little problem we had in grade school? You mean the Hiawatha speech? Where we stuttered, wet our pants, and then threw up on the stage? <laughs> that little problem? Thanks. I forgot about the wetting our pants. <laughs> That's a wonderful opportunity. Thanks. It would be my pleasure. Actually, Mr. Bracken, I would consider it a great honor if I were allowed to say a few words also. No, oh, I don't know. Two tributes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, sir. I will do a bang-up job. You had better. All the top company executives will be there. I can't believe she just weaseled her way into our chance to shine. Forget her. We are going to speak, orate, communicate, and soliloquize before the masses. What the hell did he just say? <laughs> he said we're going to wet our pants again. Beat it. Beat it? Well, at least we're talking. Come on, don't you even want to get to know me? I already know you. No, you don't. Yes, I do. You're an immature, egotistical, self-centered, shallow, spoiled little boy. What gave it away? The jacket? 
Hermo, let's go strike up a conversation with the little lovelies over there. Sorry, Jay, I'm busy right now. I'm working on my speech for Bracken's party. All the top company executives are going to be there. It's important. Wow, no kidding. A speech? Uh, are you nervous? What's to be nervous about? I'm actually looking forward to it. Hey, you're going to need some jokes. I already have some jokes. No, 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 I just heard a great one. Maybe you can use it. <laughs> this guy stops at a farmhouse, and there's this lady farmer there, and she's got really big... The weather started getting rough. The tiny ship was caught. Hey, have some respect, huh? We got a dirty joke going on here. <laughs> so just then the lady lifts up her dress and says... Meet me in the barn after everyone's asleep. I wouldn't tell this joke at a filthy joke convention. <laughs> so the guy says, Oh, God, that was great. Does that chicken have a sister? <laughs> as witty as that one is, Jay, I think I'm going to start off with a story about this treehouse I had when I was 11. Then I'll segue into the Gandhi Madonna joke, and I'm going to cap it off with a story about Mr. Bracken's first day at work with the company. And you're not nervous? I am not nervous. How's it going, Herman? Nervous? I am not nervous. I'm fine. Well, you better go first, because with my stuff, you're going to look really bad. See, a guy that I'm dating is putting a little something together for me. He writes for Letterman. David Letterman? No, Rabbi Letterman. <laughs> Let me see this. Maybe I can help you. Treehouse, Gandhi Madonna, Mr. Brackett's first day at work. <laughs> Jeez, why don't you just talk about his bad breath? <laughs> It's a good speech. It's a great speech. <laughs> okay, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> Congratulations, Bracken. Well, thank you, Crawford, and you stop being a stranger now. <laughs> Hate that son of a bitch. <laughs> I'd love to get back at him. You should have just kept talking to him. Excuse me. Nothing. <laughs> Carmen, you can almost see his breath. I can't worry about that. I'm going over my speech right now. I hear it isn't very good. <laughs> it's a great speech, an incredible speech. School children will be required to memorize this speech. Well, I'm going to mingle, Herman. My therapist and I have worked very hard on my new self-esteem, and this party is the perfect place to try it out. Hi, what do you do here? I'm an insignificant, meaningless cog. <laughs> Excuse me, I have to go to the toilet. <laughs> Herman, what time is it? I'm for a new therapist, Louise. Hey, Hermo, some party, huh? <sighs> what? Yeah, oh, yeah, great, sure. Ah, here we go. Have one of these, it'll loosen you up. Hey, booze, now that's a good idea. Are you crazy? We have to be sharp and alert. Alcohol lowers inhibitions, fogs reality, and dulls the senses. <laughs> you see, for some people, that's bad. I don't like to drink in professional situations. It's a party, Herman. If they didn't want you drinking it, they wouldn't be serving it. Now, come on, it'll take the edge off. Uh, we can't. We have our speech to think of. We have brain cells to think of. The hell with brain cells. We only use 10% anyway. That leaves us with what? 82, 83%? <laughs> oh, what the hell? One won't hurt. That a boy. Now relax and mingle with the big shots. It's Crawford. This is an opening. I don't think so. Just because he's senior editor doesn't mean he's not a nice guy. You know, the champagne crap's not too bad. <laughs> champagne Thurman? Oh, no, thank you, sir. What's the matter, drinking problem? <laughs> of course not. I, I just... Oh, this uh, is the party. I insist. This is great. Knocking them back with the big cheese. Yeah, but if we're going to kiss some ass, can it at least be in a tight skirt? <laughs> you know, sir, excuse me. Nice party, sir. Have a drink with me, Herman. I don't think we should drink anymore. Uh, I don't think I should. It's my party. You'll drink if I want you to. <laughs> this is a crummy party, Herman. You know what it could use? It could use some mouthwash. It could use a dynamic speech, something they'll remember. Don't let me down. Here's to me, Herman. Good to you, sir. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Whoa! Look at those legs, they go right up to her neck. <laughs> if not for the courage of the fearless crew, the minnow would be lost. The minnow would be lost. Hey, how's it going? Nice tie. Takes guts to wear a tie like that. <laughs> not that it's a bad tie, it's a nice tie. Hence the greeting, nice tie. <laughs> Perhaps a simple up yours would have sufficed. <laughs> hey, I'll take one of those. Herman, I've decided. I'm gonna go first. You need a good strong shoulder to throw those legs over? <laughs> Okie dokie. How's it going, buddy? Jay, when did you get here? Did you already hear speech? Speech? What speech? <laughs> Are you drunk? God, lighten up. It's a party, remember? Everyone, may I have your attention, please? Uh, Herman, call me crazy. I don't think you're in shape to speak tonight. I am fine. I know what I'm doing. The movie star. <laughs> we are here tonight to acknowledge Paul Grasson's 20 years of service with Waterton Publishing. Yeah! <laughs> But before we do that, I am reminded of the time when I was 11 years old and I built my first tree house. It's my story. Let's not panic. All we need is a cough and cuppy. <laughs> we, we still have plenty of material left. Don't forget the Gandhi Madonna joke. So Gandhi says to Madonna. <laughs> okay. Forget the Gandhi Madonna joke. As long as we stretch out Bracken's first day at work story, we're still okay. That was Mr. Bracken's first day at work. Thank you, thank you. And now, Herman Brooks. Yeah. Uh, wait, that's you. Jay, when did you get here? <laughs> oh, God, I gotta pee like a racehorse. <laughs> hey, hey, Socrates. Come on, you're on. Everything is under control. Well, here we are. Nice party. Nice tie. <laughs> nice party, nice tie. Oh my God, he's out. Somebody better start talking fast. I'll do it. I can do it, right? Boy, is it hot in here. <laughs> I'd like to start off with a little icebreaker. Anyone got any ice? <laughs> you really stink, you know that? There, I'll take over, I know what to do. You wanna hear a great joke? There's this guy who meets this lady farmer with really big... Oh my God! <laughs> I'm hot. So he says, that was terrific. Does your sister have a chicken? <laughs> Uh, don't you get it? He slept with the wrong chicken. Step aside, Bozo. Now let's talk about something that's not so entertaining. Paul Bracken. <laughs> this man can tell you the rectal temperature of a sloth. And you know why? It's because you've been stuck in that room looking up facts for ungrateful slobs whose only thanks after 20 years, is a crummy party. <laughs> I love this man. This man is like a father to me. <laughs> sure, he calls people names behind their back, like Mr. Crawford, who he really can't stand. <laughs> and, and yes, he's gruff, impatient, and a real pain in the ass. Party tribute. <laughs> and yes, he has bad breath. <laughs> well, if you spoke to him tonight, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I see by your faces that this is touching you. <laughs> and I'm glad. You see, I only have sensitive, kind things to say. And that's because all my stuff was stolen by Hetty. <laughs> she was very funny. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> 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 
Yeah, okay, Hermo, I think you said enough there, pal. Jay, it's about time you showed up. <laughs> and one more thing, Louise. You are not a cog. You may be meaningless, but you're not a cog. <laughs> well, thank you all, and good night. But I leave you with this. Why did they take so many changes of clothes for a three-hour tour? <laughs> a three-hour tour? Okay, thank you. Come on, Hermo. <laughs> you murdered him, huh? Yeah, it was more like a suicide. <laughs> Look, are you going to be okay, huh? I'm fine. What makes you think I'm not fine? Well, the crawling in the gutter, mooning the squad car, <laughs> stopping to rent Hudson Hawk. <laughs> I'll stay if you want me to, pal. I can get undressed by myself. I am a big boy. Okay. Just please call me if you need me. I am fine. Okay. Fine, fine, fine. I hope we don't throw up. Yeah, I hate throwing up. Lying there with your head in the bowl, your whole body convulsing like you're going to pass a hairball or something. <laughs> we knock it off. We're not going to throw up. We're fine. The room's spinning. <laughs> there, that is much, much worse. Animal? We're okay, right, animal? Oh, boy. We're having some fun now! I am going to die! Please, God, let me die! Please? Would you say that I have bad breath? No, sir, I wouldn't. But then again, I'm terrified of you. No, no, I don't mean now. I mean recently. Now, I can take it. In fact, I want you to tell me. We wanted to spare your feelings. And I appreciate that. Well, you don't have it now, but you did for the last couple of days. Really? Well, maybe weeks. Maybe months. <laughs> and bad. I mean, really, peel the paint off the walls, man. Kind of makes your eyes tear, makes little kids cry. I take it you're no longer sparing my feelings. Good morning, Mr. Bracken. Lovely party last night, wasn't it? It was awful. Yes, it was. My part was lovely. You stole Herman's speech. Steal is a strong word. Yes, it is. When Herman comes in, tell him I want to see him. Yes, sir. so bad. I think we threw up our socks. <laughs> Would you shut up? You're gonna get me started again, huh? Look at all these dead brain cells. <laughs> Later in life, when we're gnawing on graham crackers and drooling on ourselves, I am going to remind you all of last night. Excuse me. We've been riding on this elevator most of the morning. Can we get off now? <laughs> Morning. Morning, morning. I'd say more, but right now I'm recuperating from the elevator ride. <laughs> However, now I can tell you where the men's rooms are on the fifth and eleventh floors and the potted palm on the nineteenth. Hey, Herman, I want you to know something. I know, Louise. I'm sorry I said those things in front of all those people. It's okay. First I was mad and hurt. Then I thought about it and I realized that you weren't the one who said it. I was. I called myself meaningless, and I'm not going to do it again. At least I'm going to try not to. Thanks, Herman. And Herman, I'm going to miss you. <laughs> Herman, you've got to help me. Bracken's mad because he thinks I stole your speech. You did steal it. That was last night, Herman. How long are you going to hold this over my head? <laughs> 
fairly calm about this. The job is not really important to a man with no insides. <laughs> Mr. Bracken, I know this isn't easy for you. I'm really sorry, and I totally understand. What do you understand? Firing me. I can't blame you. Good. And I'm really sorry about ruining your party and saying those things. You deserved better. Earlier, I was upstairs with Crawford, Barber, Wilson, Benson, even Mr. Waterton. Chairman of the board. Well, I, I hope that you told them you didn't know I was a lunatic and that you'd have me killed. <laughs> well, and I told them the truth. That you're a hard worker, you're basically a good man, and you definitely aren't a drinker. I specifically told Mr. Waterton how valuable you are to this company. What did he say? He said if that's what you want, he's all yours, alligator breath. <laughs> Sorry about that, sir. So get back to work. And Herman, I want you to know that everyone is entitled to a few mistakes. You've just used all yours up. <laughs> and you were right. I am a real pain in the ass. I did have bad breath, and I do work like a dog for a lot of ungrateful people. Thanks. Now I'm definitely gonna cry. Would you stop it? Let's just ask for the day off. The man just stood up for us. He saved our job. He smiled at us. I say we do the right thing. We suck in our gut, and we live with the pain. Can I have the day off, Mr. Bracken? <laughs> Not a chance. Learn my lesson, take responsibility for my actions, that sort of thing. No. I'm going to give Hetty an enormous amount of grief today. I thought you might like to see it. say George Bush is unbeatable. I say he has not yet met his ultimate foe. You're talking about Bart Simpson visiting the White House this Thursday night on The Simpsons? Exactly. Do you think he's going to be testing the political waters? No, I think he's trying to steal something from the Oval Office. <laughs> it's a brand new Simpsons this Thursday night, followed by a new Drexel's class starring Dabney Coleman and an all-new Beverly Hills 90210. Now, get set to laugh with the Sunday Comics, next on Fox. Fox.